drugs and getting tattoos. In fact, before I continue forward, let me explain that. I asked the question, is there any instruction given to Christians to not get tattoos? And I know the people here who are listening, who know the Bible a bit, immediately thought of Leviticus 19.28 and said, oh, but there is a scripture where the Bible says that, we're not allowed, that we are not allowed to get tattoos. The issue is, you said we. Who is we? Many times we open the Bible and assume any scripture in this Bible is God speaking to a Christian. It's not true. This anthology, it's not even a book because it's actually a collection of books. The Bible is an anthology. Anthology means a collection of books, 66 to be exact. This anthology is divided into two different covenants. What is a covenant? A covenant is an agreement between two parties. A covenant is an agreement between two parties. So if these two are two different parties, they can be in a covenant with each other. For example, I can say, every Friday, I will come to your house and I will give you five apples. And in exchange for my five apples, you'll give me five oranges. And then we shake hands and say, okay, every Friday we'll do that. That's a covenant. Two parties have just made an agreement to do something for each other. Another example, when a music artist signs a contract with a record label, that's a covenant. Another name we have for that is a contract. A contract and a covenant are synonymous terms. They mean the same thing. It's simply an agreement between two or more parties. The music artist says, give me this amount of money. And for three years, I'll give you this amount of songs and albums. It is a covenant, an agreement between two or more parties. Or an NBA contract. Contract is synonymous with covenant. A player will play for a particular basketball team for five years, and that team will give that player X amount of money. That is a covenant. Now, the Bible has two covenants. Remember, a covenant is an agreement between God and another party. Now, the first covenant, or the old covenant, is God's agreement between himself and Israel. Israel, I'm not talking about the Israel of today, I'm talking about the Israel of the Bible, Abraham's blood descendants. The second covenant, or the new covenant, or new testament, the word testament is another synonymous term for covenant. I could even say the new contract, synonymous term, or the new pact, or the new agreement, is God's covenant between himself and the church. Now the church and Israel are two different entities. Israel are Abraham's blood descendants. The church are the body of Christians, people who have believed that Jesus died for the sins and that he rose from the dead, regenerated and renewed by the Holy Spirit, born again believers as we call ourselves, saints, God's people. The new covenant is God's agreement with Christians. The old covenant was God's agreement with Abraham's natural descendants at that time. And so the things that God spoke to them in their covenant do not necessarily apply to what God tells us in our covenant. For example, if we are two music artists and we go to a recording company, we have two different contracts. Your contract states that you have to give them five albums. My contract says I have to give them three. Now, at the end of our contracts, if you've only given them four and I've given them three, are we both in trouble? No, because I agreed to give them three albums and I did so. You agreed to give them five, but you gave them four. How come we're not both in trouble? Because we have two different what? Contracts. What we are expected to do is relative to the contract that we individually have with the recording company. In the same way, what the Jews were expected to do at the time in which they were in covenant what with the God, Jews, the biblical Jews were expected to do was in accordance to their contract. What I as a Christian am expected to do is according to my contract. We are in two different contracts. Same God, different contract. Very specific example. In the old contract, if one of God's people sinned, how they were forgiven 
was by killing an animal to atone for the sins. Okay? In the new contract, how a Christian is forgiven is simply by repenting, which means to acknowledge your sin, and then to ask God for forgiveness. And then he's forgiven because Jesus Christ, as the Lamb, has been slain once and for all for our sins. Now, you have the same God, the same objective, but two different methods for achieving the same thing. The Jew had to kill an animal to be forgiven. The Christian simply has to repent and ask for forgiveness. They're both seeking the same thing, but the way they obtain it is different because they're in different what? Contracts. It's the same thing with the scriptures. If I open the Bible, I don't just select a scripture and just because it's the Bible, assume it applies to me. Uh -huh. That's not how you interpret the Old Testament. We don't offer bulls and goats anymore. Why? Because we're in a different what? Contract. Now, in the same way, in Leviticus 19.28, that instruction was not given to Christians. It was given to the Jews in their contract. Now, what does that mean? Am I saying that every instruction in the Old Testament does not apply to Christians? That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is that any instruction found in the old contract that is not in the new contract does not apply to Christians. Let me say that again. Any instruction in the old contract, covenant, pact, agreement, testament that is not found in the new covenant, pact, agreement, testament does not apply to the Christian. Why? Because we are in two different contracts. And so when you're interpreting the Old Testament, the philosophy of if it's in a Bible, obey it is a wrong philosophy. Because the Bible you're reading is split into two different what? Contracts. And so if I pick a principle from the Old Testament, it does not automatically apply. I take the principle and I juxtapose it to the principles of the New Testament. If that principle is found in the New Testament, it applies. For example, not every law from the Old Testament is obsolete. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. For example, we have what we call the moral laws in nominology, the study of law, in which the moral laws are God's principles concerning right and wrong conduct in conformity with his nature. What does that mean? When God says, thou shalt not lie, that law is coming from his nature because God can't lie. And so because God wants us to behave like him as his children, as any parent would, every parent wants their child to imitate their good behavior. God wants us to be like him. And so since God doesn't lie, he tells us not to lie so that we behave like him. Now, those moral laws are in the New Testament. For example, Paul said, let him that stole steal no more which echoes the principle in the Old Testament of thou shalt not steal. And so even though it was in the Old Testament, it still came to the New Testament because these are moral principles. But then there are what do we call Levitical laws, the laws given to the priests and the people as to how they were to sacrifice to appease God and to relate with God through sacrifice in the Levitical system of worship. Those Levitical laws do not carry over to the New Testament. For example, the priests were not allowed to trim their beards. You see, that was not an instruction given to Christians for all time. It was an instruction given specifically to the Levitical priest. You see, the priests, another example, were instructed to not drink wine. That is not an instruction for Christians. Christians are instructed to not be drunk with wine. We're not instructed to not drink wine. There's a difference. And so... I'm going to ask the question again, now with this new understanding. Is it a sin for Christians to get tattoos? What would you do when you are asked that question? You go to the New Testament and you search to find if God has instructed Christians to not get tattoos. If the answer is no, it is not a sin. It does not matter what laws in the Old Testament. We go, we start with the New Testament and go back to the Old. We don't start with the Old. That's not our contract. Our contract is the New Contract, the New Covenant, the New Testament, the New Pact, the New Agreement. Now, let's get back to Leviticus 19.28. Because now we've dealt with the first issue. We know that getting a tattoo is not a sin for Christians. 
But I even want to deal with Leviticus 19 and 28 and deal with a fundamental problem because many people use that Leviticus 19, 28.